From Vernon Hills, Illinois, Prime proudly presents the Ho-Chunk Casino and Bingo Open. The fifth stop of the Brunswick World Team Challenge. Welcome to the Hawthorne Lanes. Here northwest of Chicago, we've come for the action. Happy to have you with us. And hello again, everybody. Good to have you with us. Jay Randolph along with Hall of Famer Earl Anthony. This is the fourth year of the Brunswick World Team Challenge and our fourth visit here to Hawthorne Lanes. And Earl, we've had a wonderful competition up to now. We had 64 teams here from 13 states and we are down to the television finals, three teams. 49 cities and so on and so forth. <laughs> Very good, Jay. You're right. We had a wonderful field, and we ended up with three of the strongest teams we've had ever on one of our telecasts. We're very fortunate today to have, we might say, 15 superstars in the amateur world of bowling. Uh, the opening match features two very strong teams, Lim Lim Lins Limited and the Ebonite Omega team. Either team could win this match. Uh, maybe the emotional side might go to the team in third place. The Lynn's Limited team has finished second in their last two outings in Minnesota and again in Kansas City. They really want to win this one bad, but they've got a very strong, experienced team to beat. If they can do that, they go against a very, very talented Vice Grips team, which has, an, I would say, the edge because they're the local team. They bowl league right here in this bowling center. That's an advantage. So if they get it going, they know how to play the lanes, where to play them, they could have an edge there. Well, we're looking forward to this action. We've got a great crowd on hand, and we will be back with our opening match, the Brunswick World Team Challenge, coming up. World Team Bowling Challenge is brought to you by the American Bowling Congress and the Women's International Bowling Congress, providing championship service to sanctioned leagues across the United States. Make sure your league is sanctioned by the national governing bodies. By Lynn Shoes. For well, the performance approach, it's American-made Lynn Shoes, the choice of bowlers worldwide. By Contour Power Grips, the pioneers of the finger grip industry. More pros choose Contour Power Grips, you should too. And by Brunswick, bowling is sold on Brunswick worldwide. Limited. And it will be Gus to start us off. Gus from West Dallas, Wisconsin, 38 years of age. And you can't start any better than that. That's for sure. It's a great start by Gus. He's the emotional leader for the team. He's a guy that has to get him going and keep him going. Pat Healy is 27 years of age. The 94 U.S. Amateur Champion. We have the $25,000 Perfect Game Bonus provided by our sponsors of the Brunswick World Team Challenge. on a synthetic surface with a phenolic pin deck, which is also a sy synthetic uh, surface. The oil is down the lane 37 feet, but the back ends are real dry, and you'll see a ball once in a while give it that snap hook like Pat Healy's ball just did. And that's just those dry back ends. The players have to be able to adjust to that, and they'll definitely get adjusted. The scores were pretty good this week overall. Uh, it took a uh, 29 over score for the 10th place team to qualify for match play, so we know that they're bowling pretty well overall. Starting lineup brought to you by Contour Power Grips, pioneers in the finger grip industry. More pros choose Contour Power Grips. You should too. Lynn's Limited's lineup. 
And uh, Jay can pronounce every one of those names correctly. No question about it. Right, Jay? Gary Darchevsky. <laughs> Darchevsky for the strike. He's 37 years old. And our other lineup, also presented by Contour Power Grips, Healy, Goyke, Klumpkin, Gaines, and Colton. Not a weak spot in any either lineup here. They're all very good players. Oh, this is you mentioned at the top of the show. A very talented lineup, and there there's the a reaction. problem. There's a reaction to the leadoff bowler. Pat Healy got up there, the ball snap hooked on the back end. Bob Goyke got up there, lined up off Pat Healy's ball reaction, and sent it wide. It didn't come back. Now a very tough spare. This is a washout. It's not a split. It's the one, two, four, six, ten. The idea is to either hit it in the pocket with the ball thrown hard and deflecting, or get to the left side of the head and pick it up like a washout. He tried to make it deflect, and it just didn't. He got too much of the head. Down. So early problem. Ebonite. Now this is Mark Wookerman for Linz, 38 years old, a painting contractor from Franklin, Wisconsin. This team is really, really up for this match. Emotionally, they want to win it really badly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, they finished second in the tournaments they've entered uh, on the World Team Challenge Tour, you might say. Uh, Minnesota and, and Kansas City both, and they've led back-to-back -back qualifying uh, Kansas City in here. And so you know this team can knock down a lot of pins. They just have struggled in the, in the Baker system, keep being consistent and shooting any big games. This team was sixth in the 94 Brunswick World Team. Brunswick was the Sport Street Classic team. Now here is Steve Klumpkin. Lives in Wichita, Kansas, a pro shop owner, national regional titles while well, he was a member of the 94 and 91 Team USA. Good. Right on target. And then again, it comes back to you. Watch these, these good young players that have been involved with Team USA or been involved with collegiate bowling and uh, the collegiate bowling program the instructions that they're giving now Jay are just fantastic they, get, they learn wonderful fundamentals it's been a remarkable story over the last decade Lenny Borish lives in Kenosha <laughs> Lenny Borish comes through with a beauty Kenosha that's just up the street huh mm -hmm. been there a few times let's go up 41 a little ways and there you are <laughs> Here is Big John Gaines. That's, that's Jay, that you're exactly right. Big John Gaines is, is, is the way to describe this guy. He's a real big guy. Uh, physically, he's tremendously strong, but watch how well he gets to the foul line. Watch the balance and how smoothly he gets rid of the bowling ball. A little bit high. Gaines, who lives in the Baltimore area, 28 years old. He's recovering from uh, a back injury, Jay, and he had, a, he had back surgery, so he's down to using a 14-pound ball right now. Uh, but with his strength, he can still get enough rotation on that bowling ball to make it hit, no problem. Cross lane at the spare, switch balls. Throw it hard and straight at the corner, 6-10. 14 for 14 spares. Get a look at... The anchor man for Lens Limited. The lead right now, 24 for Lens Limited, and Dale Traber, bowling proprietor, handles the regatta lanes. Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Don't be too pleased with that. Dale's nickname is the Iceman, and the, the reason they call him the Iceman is under pressure, he's about as cool as you can get. He generally makes a great shot when you need him to make it. And uh, he had an opportunity in Kansas City in their last outing to double in the 10th and win that event. Got the first strike and I believe left a four pin on the second shot. It's an unload day for didn't strike. Pick that one up in fine fashion. Well, here is the familiar visage of Mr. Chris Barnes. Barnes, just 25 years old, but with a world of experience. Now the assistant coach at Wichita State University. That's when he has time to be there. This guy's always bowling somewhere. 
He's going to be on Team USA for the third consecutive year in 96, following Vince Biondo oh, and Vice Grip. <laughs> Only male to achieve that feat. Strike for Barnes. We'll return with more from the Hawthorne Lanes in Vernon Hills, Illinois. Challenge in our semifinal match, Lynn's Limited leading by 26. Second time around, Jay. The nerves should be a little more relaxed. The guy's ready to play. Gushinaris. A two-game match. With the winner going on to face Vice Grips in the championship. Got to hurry. Oh, boy. Now we got real problems. The two, the four, and the ten. A very difficult spare. Uh, ideally, you can get the ball between the two and the four and have the two pins slide across, take out the ten. The way the back ends are moving down there, the, the back end of the lane, as I mentioned, is dry. The ball wants to hook very sharply. Once it starts to go left, it goes very hard. So uh, ideally here he can throw it down the middle of the lane, hard and straight, not let the ball hook, have a chance to convert this. If he lets it hook, it'll probably run away from the spare. The high games. Storm from Versailles, Indiana. Ebonite Nitro R from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Lenny Borsch from Kenosha. The high individual, 279 with Roy Turner and Norb Wetzel. High series, Bill Spigner, Vernon Hills. Bill is the host proprietor here. It's, I think it's pronounced Spigner, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Spigner. He'll let you know about that later. <laughs> Pat Healy. Oh, Gave a lot of room this time. Yeah. Up with the strikes. The gentleman won four gold medals in the 95 Pan American Games. Now, if this team gets it going, this Ebonite team, if they get going here, get lined up, uh, boy, can they throw a lot of strikes. Here's another look at Pat Healy coming right at you. It's a great angle. You see that tremendous release, great rotation, and his balance at the foul line, all key things to getting that kind of power. Gary Darshevsky. They're all a little afraid it's going to go up high in the head pin. That's the way that they seem to be acting. Uh, they're making sure the ball doesn't finish. And by doing so, they're getting these uh, difficult spares. Here are the 2-4-5. And believe me, this is a very tough spare. A lot of ways to chop this. And he's got to be very careful. You can, there's a look at it. It looks like it's right on the spots. Brand new Brunswick pins. <laughs> 19 for 19 and picking up the spares. Let me give you a little idea what the bowlers did this week. As Jay mentioned, uh, when we started this telecast, there were 64 teams here from uh, a variety of cities and, of course, 12 states. They bowled six games on Saturday morning and afternoon. The top 10 score-wise, total pin-wise, then advanced to the play uh, this Sunday morning. And they bowled ten two-game matches with bonus pins involved. They carried over their pinfall into that match play. And if you won a game, you won 15 bonus pins. If you won both games, you won obviously 30 bonus pins. But if you won total pins, that's 20 more possible 50 bonus pins each match. There is a position round at the end. Uh, the top three teams after all of that bowling. And today was Baker system only match play. After all that bowling, the top three are right here. And they are the cream of the crop. Very talented all three teams. And a four-pin lead for Lynn's Limited. $20,000, roughly the prize money here this week. And, of course, the winners get the trip to the Grand Championship in August. Come on, Marcus. Can't get the ball to finish on lane 11, and the players on you know, the, the Ebonite Omega team on lane 12 is having just the opposite reaction. They're struggling to keep the ball from hooking too much. So there is a difference in the back end, or at least in the way the players are playing the two lanes. We'll know more uh, once they make the switch. This is a two-game. Total pins wins the match. And uh, after, after they bowl this, uh, this game, they'll switch lanes. And this is a very tough spare, almost impossible. The two, the eight, and the ten. And generally, that's, the, that's what you end up with, one of those three. Bob Goyke, or excuse me, this is Klumpkin. Steve, again, a classic style. Watch him on the way to the foul line. This guy really gets to the foul line well, stays with the ball as long as you possibly can without jerking on it, and great balance. 
That's what creates the consistency in his role and in his ability to hit what he's looking at. The ball snap on this lane, lane 12. Everybody's ball is hooking on the back. And uh, on lane 11, they can't get it to look. Here's another look at that style I was talking about. Watch how free and easy he swings it from the shoulder. Stays real steady with the head. Perfect position there. Now he's going into that long slide. And look at his shoulders directly over the knee. That's exactly how you want to play this game. Look at that follow through straight up. This fellow won two gold medals in the 91 FIQ World Championships. Got a break there. I think he thought he missed that spare. That ball didn't slide as much as he expected it to. The lead is nine for Ebonite Omegas. Got us a good match going here, and as generally happens, this could come down. Remember, it's, like I said, it's two games total pins. Very often they come right down to the last two guys bowling, the anchormen. Lenny Borish. Strike for Borish. 92 Wisconsin State match play champion. Again is Gaines. He has one PBA regional title to his credit over the years. Just to see him out here bowling is an accomplishment. Remember, he's, he's gone through back surgery. He's recovering from that. Throwing a 14-pound bowling ball. He's only been back two weeks, so I think he's doing remarkably well. Watch this style for a big guy. This guy is about six foot seven. Watch how he gets to the foul line. Nice and smooth. Look at that arm swing. That's as good as you can swing it. Right there. It's pretty good there, huh, Jay? Very athletic for a big man. He really you is. Betcha. Tough spare. The two and the eight. He wants to get both these pins with the ball. Play it just off the strike line. Let it hook into the two pin. The ball should take out the eight. Shouldn't be that big a problem for him. is seven. Well, the Iceman's got a chance to uh, cut into that right here. Going in on a strike, catches the double, they can uh, actually take the lead in the match. <laughs> Dale won the 94 PBA National Resident Pro title. Well, it was probably uh, as good as he could get considering that well, they struggled so much in that lane, and everybody was coming in light, light, light. He finally at least got it up to the head pin, gave it a chance to strike. And in the background, I could hear Gus Yanaris saying, come on, ice. <laughs> the ice man. Pick the spare up. Fill the frames. Try not to make mistakes. That's the key. Make the system. Just don't make mistakes. Don't look to shoot big numbers. Just don't make those mistakes that can cost you the game. But we could have an interesting climax to this match. And really, when they switch lanes, I'm really interested to see how well they will adjust from one lane to the other, because obviously there is a difference in ball reaction. Oh. All right. Down late for seven and ten. Let's see what Chris Barnes can do. Here's another look at that one, and watch what happens here. Watch the head pin as it goes off the two, off the wall. Comes all the way back across. Well, it was a little late. The 10 was going anyway. I thought that the head pin had done some damage, but I guess it was already going down. Chris Barnes. Let's see if Chris gives it a lot of room or just throws it harder. Generally, he likes to throw it harder. Going a little harder, more direct. So he's got a very frustrated look on his face. He can't believe that ball hooked that much. I guess the first time we saw this fellow, Earl, and we've mentioned it before, is about a half a dozen years ago in Atlantic City when he bowled in the bowling shootout there. That's right. In one of the showrooms, and uh, I don't think he shaved. Oh. I don't <laughs> think he's shaving yet. He's only well, 25. A <laughs> couple times a week. A couple times a week. Well, he is a great spare shooter. Got away with that one. That one got a little more hooked than he thought expected to. And you can see the smile, and he's looking at his teammates saying, well, what? What did you think I was going to miss that or what? He came close to missing it. In the Baker system, each player only gets to bowl two frames each game. And that's what makes it difficult. The problem is trying to create consistency. And so when you put your lineup together, you want everybody to work together. And the anchor man so important. We'll be back with more from Vernon Hills, Illinois, in a moment. 
The Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge is brought to you by Ho-Chunk Casino and Bingo. In the beautiful Wisconsin Dells. Good friends, good fortune. And our first game, it was very tight. Ebonite Omega, 180. Lins Limited, 178. It's a two-game match, and Pat Healy, Jr. will start it off for Ebonite Omega. Well, let's see what Pat does in getting his team lined up on this lane. Remember, this is the lane that the Lins team had trouble getting the ball to finish. Couldn't get it up to the head pin. He got it there, but it's a little late. A little behind the head pin. A solid 10. Love his release. Gets the ball well out in front. Doesn't throw it out there. Just swings it out in front. Stays with it. Chases it down the lane with his hand. Creates accuracy and rotation. He's a bowling sales rep representing the SMS 10 Plus. A new and rather revolutionary little grip uh, item that has uh, been very popular up in Canada coming out of the United States. Let's look at this release. Here's a look at a great angle at that release. Watch how long he stays with the ball. See that? He doesn't jerk his hand out of it. It just comes off nice and smooth. The more you want to jerk your hand out of the ball, the less less you actually get on the ball and the less, less not only less rotation, but obviously you can't be as accurate. So the longer you stay with it and chase the ball with your hand, the better the shot is. Gus owns a tavern in West Dallas, Wisconsin, which is the speed skating capital of the United States. Hi. This is the lane at hook now. This is the one that they're, they're going to have trouble. Uh, I think the edge goes to the Ebonite Omega team. I think it's easier to line up on a lane that isn't finishing than one that's hooking, that, that's overhooking. So the, uh, this team right here, this Lens team, uh, Again, very experienced, very talented, but they're going to have more problems getting lined up, I think, than the Omega team. Gus looking at the 3610. All right. Here's Bob Goyke. Well, let's see if he lines up and plays basically the same shot that Pat Healy did because Pat's the guy, they, they got him up there in the number one position so he can line up the rest of the team. And that's where he's at. He's playing basically the same shot. Great reaction, but left the tent. And same exact shot that Pat Healy threw. Bob is a bowling center owner. The Lodge Lanes in Belleville, Michigan. 84 ABC Tournament All-Events Champion. Boyke and Klimkin mixed up for a moment here. Changed numbers on me at the last second. Well, they look so much alike. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get to the point where I only look at the numbers. I, I know. Right? Well, that's what those numbers are for. That's right. We can't help it if they switch it on you, Jay. That's okay. Yeah, having fun. Gary Darchevsky. He's going to get mad at you. you, you got to say Darashevsky. Darashevsky. There you go, Darashevsky. We're going to take a look at the style of this guy because it's, it's one of the better ones also. A little different than what he does taking the ball back. Now, he overreacted. He, he, watched his, he watched Gus get up there and it hooked, and Gus probably came back and told him it's hooking, so he threw it a little too hard. Here's a look at it. Watch the foot. Watch what he does carrying the ball back. Both hands, both hands. Then he lets it go, picks it straight up. But watch how all this comes out of the wash, right at the bottom. Look where he's at now. Perfect position right there. Just comes up on the knee a little bit. That's the only thing he did that would, you, I wouldn't rec recommend you copy at the end. <laughs> No, Carter actually pushed the, pushed ball, the ball more, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't look like he was he'd playing kinda, shuffleboard. Yeah, he'd kind of hook it like that, but uh, here's our score right now. Carter missed the pocket once in about 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Lumpkin, who is a pro shop owner, lives in Wichita. Look at the intensity on his face, Jay. The eyes. Gave it lots of room. Lots of room. Didn't get it back. And oh, well, he got, got, got a big break there, yes. My. He had everything. He had the 2 8 10 briefly. Got very fortunate there to get only the 2 pin. Here's another look at it. Watch how far down the lane it gets. 
before it hooks. That's the difference between the two lanes. Lane 11, the ball goes 45, 50 feet before it starts to grip or creates any friction. Lane 12, the ball is getting friction at about 35 feet, and that's why they're having trouble uh, matching up on the two lanes. Both these teams really pumped, really want to win this badly, but I still feel that uh, Gus Yanaris' team, the Lins Limited team, is, is they might even get to the point where they're hurting themselves they want to win it so badly. Well, and you, you want to make sure you don't make the mistake. You don't have the open frame. Right. Lots of loft there. Get it Mark Wilkeman. Switching balls, go to a hard surface, shiny shell. Something that'll skid for him. He'll go cross lane at the 10 pin. This team was first in the 93 Twin Cities Regional. 16 of 17 spares in match play. There's another one. We'll have more action from Vernon Hills, Illinois. In a Evan Mega is up by five. Gaines and Borsch with strikes while we were away. Chris Barnes. Look at the intense concentration there. I mean, he just really is into making a good shot. Yeah. He does. And you can see the intensity continue. He picks his club up. And the Iceman. His brother recently led a tournament, a pro event, uh, in Rochester, New York, and lost to Walter Ray Williams by two pins in the championship match. He led it by 349 pins and then lost. So the Traper family, both brothers, excellent. Really good players. Another 10 pin, and this time on lane 12, which is the hooking lane. I think Dale was very disappointed with that one. He knew he'd made a good shot and just didn't carry the corner. Over the years, he's had 19 PBA regional titles. <laughs> Winner of his first two-game match, moving on to play vice grips in the championship. Evan Ida Megas up by 15. I think Linz is in a lot of trouble right now. They couldn't answer. Uh, the ice band didn't get the strike in the fifth to keep him in the match at this point. And Ebonite is lined up now on the left-hand lane. Lane 11 is the easier one to hit the pocket on once you figure out where to play it. And I don't expect them to miss very often. If they carry the corner pins, this could be a lot of problems for Linz Limited. Another good shot there. Oh. Got them all. Well, you uh, saw Bill Spiker there for a moment until everybody was up high-fiving. There he is, Bill, the proprietor here, does a wonderful job. He bowled in the tournament here. Yep, they made the cut. His team made the top ten. Bill, uh, you know, was a very successful touring player. He won, I think, four uh, tour events. Gus Yanaris. Gus has to get his team going. Remember I mentioned he's the guy that gets him going spiritually, you might say. He's the guy that pumps him up, and that's trouble. He got away with it. Look at there. Nice kind of trouble. We'll be back with more from Vernon Hills, Illinois, right after we take this time out. 35, Goyke with a strike, and then Dereshevsky left the seven, got the spare. Steve, Steve with a chance here to really put the match away. Uh, they lined up well in lane 11. They're all making good shots. Now. Yeah. This is what it's all about. Yes, indeed. And they're beginning to really feel it. They got the choice of lanes, Earl, because they finished second. Right. The team that finishes higher in the standings always gets to choose the starting lane. Looks like they made the right choice. Looks like it to me, too. The Vice Grips team, you might hear some pinfall in the background. That's the Vice Grips team. The tournament leaders warming up and getting ready to come over here. They're warming up, but also they're paying attention, I'm sure. Yeah, they're watching. They, you know, we've got the monitors on all over the house here, and uh, the automatic scorers, Brunswick scorers. On these Brunswick scorers, you can see what's going on. They can see exactly what the teams are doing, how they're playing the lanes, and uh, you can bet they're, they're paying very close attention. Coach Larry Gilworth. Alternate and the sponsor. He's been watching intently. 
Well, they might have a, uh, something going for them that neither one of these other teams had anyway. They're the local uh, guys. They bowl league here. That's right. uh, not on the same team, but in the same league. And so they're very familiar with the house, the, the surroundings, and uh, that's a comfort zone for you. You feel more comfortable when you're familiar with the surroundings. So they'll be a little more relaxed. John Gaines gets it underway. Strike for Gaines. There is the vice grips team warming up down there. Tony Tony Cariola looked up there and said, hey, I'm on TV. Let me throw this in while I'm on TV. <laughs> Lenny Borish. The 92 Wisconsin State match play champion. He's got it on the way. Now, before we get into that championship match, that vice grip team is going to come over here and get some practice balls. So that also will help them a little bit. They get to warm up. They uh, get a couple of shots each on each lane. And uh, once they do that, they'll have an idea of which lane they prefer. And they may decide to make the Ebonite team finish on lane 12, which looks to be the most difficult right now. Or they might decide that we want to finish on lane 12 and get a fast start on lane 11. So it's really hard to say what they're going to do. It'll be their decision. It'll be interesting to see how they determine that because they do get the choice of starting lanes. The lead is 57. It's out of hand here and Barnes to the line. But it's fun to watch. Uh, you know, they got a poss possible 268 game, which is tremendous in the Baker system. And the strike for Barnes and the big smile. We'll be back. News from the bowling world is coming up. And, of course, our championship match. It's all coming up in just a few minutes. It's time to go around the bowling world. Bowling is the number one participation sport, according to figures released by the Sporting Goods Manufacturers Association. Numbers for 1994 put bowling on top of the charts with 53.1 million participants. Freshwater fishing was listed second with over 50 million participants, followed by basketball, billiards, and camping. Mika Koivunami is making bowling history in Finland. Koivunami, after pacing Team Finland to a fourth place showing at last season's Brunswick World Team Challenge Grand Championship, has notched his third Finnish national championship to become the first man to accomplish that feat. Three-time USA member Pat Healy Jr. of Niagara Falls, New York, and two-time Team USA member Kendra Cameron of Gambrels, Maryland, earned the right to represent the U.S. at the 1995 AMF World Cup to be held this month at the Planet Bowl in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The strength of Team USA proved to be a key. All ten World Cup national finalists were either current or former members of Team USA. It seems every time there's an award being given, legendary Hall of Famer Joe Norris is the recipient. Here's another one. The Salute to Champion 7 has selected Joe as one of this year's honorees. The black tie event is scheduled for February 23rd, 24th in St. Louis. It's a fundraiser for the Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum located in downtown St. Louis. Kegler's in New York State can now display their bowler's pride with a special ABC commemorative automobile license plate. The issuance of the plate celebrates ABC Centennial and its foundation in New York City in 1895. Early next year, the doors of the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City will open to host the 93rd Annual American Bowling Congress Tournament. Looking ahead to the showcase of bowling, the 95 singles champion Matt Serena helped his ace paving team to a second place finish in this season's Brunswick World Team Challenge event in Portland. The Women's International Bowling Congress is preparing for its 77th National Championship Tournament in Buffalo, New York. That starts April the 4th. For information on how to enter either one of these exciting national competitions, call 800-211-1358. Our championship match coming up right after these messages. The Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge is brought to you by Ho-Chunk Casino and Bingo in the beautiful Wisconsin Dells. Good friends, good fortune. The score of the first match is finished with nine strikes. 
Dave Sill and Pat Healy Jr. shake hands. It'll be Sill to start it off for Vice Grips. Their qualifying average 205. Sill, 36 years old from Cary, Illinois, a vending company owner. A lot of lift and oh, lift and yeah. Got it done. Yep, that's the way to start it out. Ebonite Omega's qualifying average was 220. His personal average at 220. As we mentioned that he'll represent the U.S. in the AMF World Cup this month in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Wish him good luck. Strike there, the Contour Power Grip starting lineup brought to you by Contour Power Grips, pioneers in the finger grip industry. More pros choose Contour Power Grips, and you should too. All right, here we go. Jay, this is kind of interesting. Is, go ahead, and you can. Uh, well, this is Vince Biondo, 25 right. years old, lives in nearby Hoffman Estates, Illinois. The choice of starting lanes, we've gone through this once before, is to the team that qualifies higher. Right. And the team that's on the left lane, Vice Grips, obviously as tournament leaders, got to choose their starting lane, and they decided that they would like to start on lane 11, which was obviously the highest scoring lane in the first match. And maybe they felt they could get out of the gate with a big score and put the pressure on this Ebonite team, which I don't think would even know they had any pressure on them. They're so such a talented five bowlers. But they have given Ebonite the opportunity to finish on their strong lane. Uh, I would never have done that. I would have put Ebonite on that lane, let them do the best they can out of the gate, knowing that we had what we might consider our best lane to finish on. I'd much rather have that situation and uh, see what I had to shoot to win the tournament rather than uh, put them in position of, of struggling through on lane 12 maybe with uh, the way they're bowling maybe a 2-0 and shooting 240 at me in lane 11. I wouldn't like that. Bob Goyke, who finished ninth in the 95 U.S. Amateur Championships, he's got a problem. Definitely got a problem. And again, this lane is the one that's hooking. Nobody seems to be able to figure it out. They can't get the break point down, and, and uh, you can see his uh, disgust. The big four, here's another look at it. He's playing in between third and fourth arrow, but see how quickly the ball starts rotating and going left? They just can't get the ball to skid as far as they can on lane 11. And the longer you can get it to skid, the better off you are. The more you can control it. Well, he loses the count. Trying to get three, ends up with one. And that can be, uh, obviously, it can be a major difference. Uh, if he'd have got uh, two of them, they would have had a score of 26 instead of 24. Tony Cariello. Jay, this guy can turn it up. Yes, he can. And uh, he took over to replace... Larry Delworth, the sponsor, who is now the alternate hey. coach. He's going through in fine fashion. He's from Carroll Stream, Illinois. Derwin Petrie, the individual qualifying average leader from Cincinnati, Ohio. And our proprietor again, Bill Vernon Hills here with a 228.2. Vice Grips, Omegas, and Lynn Shoes, their regular average, the Baker average. Vice Grips inserts. One five, lost five. Omega six and four. Lynn seven and three. Match play. And the strike there. Nicely done by Steve Plumpkin. I hate to see him give away this advantage, which I think they've done by their choice of starting lines. Anyway, here's another look at that shot. He got it down early, and what he did is just drag his hand out of it, and that creates that long, long, long flow down the lane, through, even through that hooking area. So it didn't hook early for him. And that was a ball thrown there for Davy Rosen. Rosen, the fourth man in the rotation for Vice Grips. Nine 300 games and four 800 series including an 821 here at Hawthorne. But the thing we have to mention, and it's only 
fair that we do is that the American Bowen Congress sets the lane pattern. It's not a house condition. It's not the normal shot that is here. So the bowlers, even though they are in a friendly center, you might say, because they do bowl league here, it's a different uh, ball reaction they're getting on the surface than they normally would get. So they still have to try to figure out just like the rest of the players. Here's John Gaines. but he got the strike. Now there's a benefit you get from a 14-pound ball instead of cutting through it, deflected. Ebonite leading by eight. More. Something to wash it down with? How about some punch? Prime takes you to the L.A. Forum for fight night. And the Major League season may be over, but there's still plenty of leftovers as the Arizona Fall League gets swinging. Don't leave November hungry for sports. Prime has got your fill. And right now we get our first look at Adam Colton. Anchor man for vice grips. Yeah, he's a sub on this team. He was, uh, he was bowling in a tournament in a regional. He won the tournament. He was bowling with Larry Gilworth, who's the guy who put the team together. Right. Larry put the entry in for this team, got hurt, couldn't couldn't compete, so he asked Adam if he wanted to come in and bowl, and here they are in first place. He finished in the top five in the Masters a few years ago. Now here's Barnes. It's kind of interesting getting back to Adam Colton. Uh, he was the only guy I've seen so far successfully play uh, outside on the lane, out near the channel. Barnes disgusted. Update you on some other finishers in fourth place. Ebonite Nitro R. They were second last week. The Lynn's Lakers, Minneapolis. Storm from Versailles, Indiana. Team Columbia Turbo Grips out of Dayton, Ohio. And a little problem at the foul line, but he was able to pick up the spare vice grips from Missouri from Springfield. Hawthorne Lane's team from right here, finishing ninth. And Action Pro Shop out of Chicago, Illinois. What a good looking baby there. <laughs> now they're breaking him in. That's their sixth man, Jay. Getting him ready, yeah. Huh? Getting him ready, yeah. Ebonite Omega's up by seven. It's the first game of our championship match. Winners move on to the grand championship in August. Dave Sill. Strike for Sill, former coach, of course, of the LPBT star and new WIBC Hall of Famer, electee Alita Sill. And you could hear the cheering in the background because they, like I mentioned, they are the favorites here. They're the home team, you might say. Pat Healy, Jr. I was talking to Pat earlier. He said it uh, up until December for the previous year, he'd been home about 13 weeks. He'd been traveling all over the world, bowling in amateur events, uh, various countries, all over Asia, Europe. Well, now he's got that trip coming up to Brazil. Be exciting for him. Well, that one didn't cycle the machine, so he had a little extra time hoping they'd fall down, but it didn't happen. Eight pin only. Earl, I'm reminded that uh, we have that $25,000 perfect game bonus, and uh, maybe somebody has a shot of it in the next game. We had a 300 game right here in the third event of the inaugural year of the Brunswick World Team Challenge back in 92. That, that team from St. Louis, the Weber team. We'll be back with more action. Right now, this time out, Jay Randolph with you from Hawthorne Lanes in Vernon Hills, Illinois. Mince Biondo. Hey! Hello. Yeah. Well, he's got just about everything. That's a, that's what you call a reactive resin split, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see these. You didn't used to see these when you had plastic and rubber bowling balls. Watch the ball cut right through the heart of the pins. It's that sharp break on the back. And you can only get that with that kind of a hook. This three, is four, very six, makeable. Seven. Very makeable. He wants to get the ball between the three and the six. The three pinch and slide into the four and the seven. He's giving it a chance. Excellent try. Just great effort. And that was after the team uh, had something going there. They had that back-to-back -back strikes and a chance to really get to put some pressure on the Ebonite team and 
Not only did he not get the mark, but he got lost a lot of count there. Back to back splits for Big Bob. He started the, started out with a big four in his first shot in the second frame there. There's our friend Ralph Snake, the business department of the Ho Chunk Casino here. Good to have a lot of the folks down from that wonderful facility up in the Wisconsin Dells. Had a couple of teams bowling in this event. I was talking to them uh, how they bowled. They said they're going to give it another shot, Jay. They enjoyed it. They liked it. They had a lot of fun. And then we all got together and took some pictures. Well, <laughs> we and they gave time. you a lucky charm. That's, That's right. To bring your luck. Vice grips up by two. Here is Tony Carello. Cariello. He's from Carroll Stream, Illinois. He won his, uh, a national stop on the PBA tour and was in my bowling center in Dublin. Hey. Oh. He was the 83 ABC All Events champion as well. Uh, he's, he's a good player. He has been for a long time. Gary Hello picking up his team. Lumpkin. Kind of an interesting release he used last time. Remember I mentioned he laid it down early and kind of dragged his hand out of the ball and let it kind of float down the lane. See if he does that again. This young man came out of Mr. Vanniger's great program at Wichita. Vatican. There it is. Same shot. Floated down the lane. He's got it working. He knows what to do out there. Here's a look at it. Watch how soon he gets it down the lane. He won't hit up on this. He'll let it down right at the foul line. No big hit on this. Watch the ball come off the hand right there. It's already leaving his hand. Great shot. Look at the balance. Perfect balance. Gordon would be happy. Yes, he would. So would I. I'd like to be able to throw it like that. <laughs> One of the best coaches ever, probably, in, in bowling, as far as I'm aware, in the last 25 or 30 years, Freddie Borden out of the Akron area has yes. had a lot of input on a lot of these great amateur bowlers also because of Team USA and uh, he's helped uh, the games of, of great amateur players to the Barnes. best in the world right yeah Pat Healy and Chris Barnes right here today he's going to retire after this year as Team USA coach but he's certainly done a remarkable job not only that but he did a lot of coaching on the paper also with stars like Don Johnson you know, developed his game for him and a lot of other players still go to uh, Fred Borden off the Pro Tour for help. John Gaines. This is a key shot. Even though it's only the first game of this two-game total pin match, this is a chance for Ebonite to get some good pins on a tough lane and get onto their easy lane, either in control of the match with the lead uh, or very close to it. But they have a chance to put this out for 208, and this is the key shot to get them there. And he knew how important it was. You can see by his look. He made a great shot. He really made a good shot. Left, Left the four. Solid four pin. Well, Ebonite going along right at the pace they started on this lane in their first match. In the opening match, they bowled 180 on this lane. And they really picked it up. They really picked it up. But uh, they're going at a 178 pace at the moment. 180 in game one and then back with a 268 in game two to win the first match. Vice Grips leads by two. See, this is the Vice Grips just didn't take advantage of what we consider the scoring lane, lane 11. Um, that's the lane that it would appear you can shoot the numbers on. So I, that's why I felt that maybe they made a mistake in their choice of starting lanes. They might have wanted to uh, get a game in on the tough one. They get loose get loose mentally before they get back over to lane 11 where they might shoot a number. Big strike for Adam Colton right here. This is the only guy that's playing this angle. And that's tough to do. Uh, when you know that the shot isn't really there. It's not as good a shot as it is inside as far as consistency goes or you wouldn't have nine guys playing inside. But he can play that shot because he can make that kind of shot with an end over end roll. The ball doesn't overreact. Watch the rotation of his ball. You've seen the other guy's balls going sideways down the lane. His will go forward. This fellow finished third in the 94 ABC Bud Light Masters. Look at this. Hmm. One, two, eight, ten. A little more ball speed, got a little wide of his target. He was going a little more direct with the other one, and it just didn't hook back. 
something in that 180 area, high 170s. And Ebonite still with a chance to take a small lead, first game. Just a count fill, really. Just a couple extra pins, and there's the tape he took out of his thumb hole. Obviously having a little problem with the uh, release. Here's the another results have got to make him happy here. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he probably got one or two more pins than he would have That's otherwise. Right. Well, let's see if Chris can finish this game out. He made a great shot in the in the fifth frame, his first try on lane 12 in this match. Didn't strike. Another great shot. Well, he's getting the job done. He's, you can see he's disappointed. He really liked the shot and can't understand how it can hook that much in the last five feet. But so be it. Make the spare. Go to the other lane. See what you can do. Just don't get careless and give away something here. See how he relaxes the wrist so he can throw it hard and straight. a member of Team USA, which won the 95 Brunswick World Team Challenge Open Division Grand Championship. <coughs> Lots of room here. Let's back in. And the 10 pin instead of the 4. Now we'll have game two coming up when we return to Vernon Hills, Illinois. Right at back here at Vernon Hills, Illinois, we go to our final game. And who will be the champion? Move on to the Grand Championships in August. Pat Healy will start it off. Here's where we find out if the lanes have gone through any kind of a transition. If the oil has moved around because there's been another game, plus some practice balls bowled, bowled on the left-hand lane, or will it be pretty much the same shot? and they'll be lined up, and if they are, we can see a big score here. It's a different reaction, and Pat's kind of disgusted. He's shaking his head a little bit. I don't think he really got out of that ball the way he wanted to either, Jay. I, it looked to me like he was off balance a little bit, and the ball didn't have the ball speed that he might have wanted uh, to get it down the lane. For the spare, 6'10". Well, it's going to be interesting uh, what Bob Goyke can do after that shot and see if he tries to give it a lot more room and will it roll back to the pocket. That's the key. Now, what's going to happen on lane 12? Well, we're going to find out what Vice Grips can do on what has been the lower scoring of the two lanes up till now. Here's Dave Sill. Well, there is Conroy Green Deer from Ho-Chunk Casino and Bingo, our friend. who has been here with us and be part of our presentation today to have him on hand. Sill with another strike. They're pumped up. He's the defending Detroit match game classic champion. Here's Bob Goyke. See, now he made an adjustment off Pat Healy's shot, and I don't think Pat Healy made a good shot. So he made an adjustment off what was really uh, not a, not a well-thrown ball, and he didn't get a good reaction. Uh, I think he moved a lot more than was necessary. Now he's got a tough spare. This is not an easy shot. The 3-5, there's an awful lot of ways to miss this one. The ideal way to pick it up is to put it between the 3-5, get both pins with the ball. What happens, uh, anytime you have a, a, a two-pin spare with one pin out front, if we look at it again like this, there's a lot of ways to chop it. You want to, if you could, you know, he could have had that hook a little bit, he'd made it. He could have had it skid a little bit, he makes it, but uh, not this time. Vince Biondo. Vince won a gold medal in the 91 FIQ World Championship. <laughs> And a strike. 
<laughs> yeah, they really want to. Looking, they're up off the bench. I mean, they're getting into this. They, they see some daylight out there. The Ebonite team is making some mistakes. And this is an opportunity to build a little bit of a lead. Maybe they won't be able to catch up. We're getting down to the guys for the Ebonite Omega team who make things happen, starting right here with Steve Klimkin. These are the guys that can throw the strikes. That's why they're bowling third, fourth, and fifth. And Klumpkin gets a strike. Another look at that shot, and you can see the rotation of the difference in the rotation. Remember, I told you about the guy playing the corner? As it was end over end, you can see the different the side rotation on that ball and the great pin action. The last pin down the seven. Tony Cariello, he's an insurance salesman. He's not bowling. Which, uh, he bowls a lot. <laughs> Tony. Yes! Uh, we still have an opportunity for uh, maybe That's some extra right, bucks here. $25,000 perfect game bonus presented by the sponsors of the Brunswick World Team Challenge. Look how well he got that ball down the lane. He really forced it down the lane with good loft. Got the job done extremely well. This is uh, now we're going to see if Evan and I can respond to this kind of pressure. Nobody's really pushed him yet. Well, nice grips up by 37. John Gaines. That's the kind of response they needed. Yeah, these are the guys that control the strikes. Like I mentioned, the bottom three on this team can strike with anybody. Uh, it's going to be all. They're going to need them all, no question, the way Vice Grips is going to lane 12. I didn't expect them to bowl this well on this lane. But again, there's a long way to go. We've got seven frames to play, and this could be one that comes down to the anchorman again, Jay. Davey Rosen finished 10th in the 92 ABC Tournament Singles. Yes, he did. Boy, are they playing well on this lane. Fifth arrow. Really deep inside, throwing it. I bet that's about as hard as he can throw the ball. And he got it to stay on line. There's some excitement. The lead is 37. Here's Barnes. Slider. Yeah, well, watch what happened to the head pin. The pin right in the front here. It'll go to the sidewall. Bang, right there. It comes all the way back across. And here's Chris Barnes' reaction. They needed that hit. They can't afford to lose one at this point. Not the way Vice Grips is going. Adam Colton. Here's a guy up from the channel. It's going to hit Only the baby, the 310. But it does stop that string of strikes at four in a row and gives Ebonite a chance to get back into it. Not an easy spare, but it's a lot easier than some. Hit the ball cross lane, go cross lane, go to a ball that doesn't hook much, fit it between the two pins. I'll have to deflect off the three into the ten. Well, he's got a problem here. He was able to pick up the spare. We'll return with more action from the Brunswick World Team Challenge right after these messages. Vernon Hills, Illinois, Pat Healy, Jr. Coming down to the end of this championship match. Oh, disaster there. The washout, one, two, four, ten. Got it out there in the out-of-bounds area, and it just never made the corner. In the first frame on this lane, he went high. This one, he gives a little more room, doesn't get the reaction on the back. This is a must pick up, Jay. He's got to pick this one up. He's got to get the ball on the left side of the head pin, have it go into the 10. The ball will take out the 2 4. Can't afford any more opens. Oh, he picked it up beautifully. He did. What a great shot. That was, as you mentioned, Earl, a must. And here's another look at it. Watch how perfectly he does this. I mean, you can't do any better than that. The key was that it kept his team in the match mentally, much more so than physically. Even though they are still around 40 pins behind, it made it good that they didn't get the open. Now they're still in there mentally thinking, we still got a chance to win this. He 
Here's Dave Sill. Hasn't made a mistake yet. This guy's no. made three great shots. He certainly has. He has been on target. Hey, hey. Oh, boy. A little high with that one. Now, now this is now we're getting some tough spares. <laughs> this one is getting real tough. This is the three, six, seven, ten, and here's another look at how he got it. The ball just starts hooking right there, and it's through the middle of the head pin. If it had skidded another six inches, it'd have been perfect. The idea is to get the ball between the three and the six. The three pin goes over and takes out the seven. Cross lane, lane is the best way to play this, in my opinion. It's where he's going through the middle of the lane, cross lane. Great drop. Great try. Almost got there. Well, this makes it into a match again. It's about a 14-pin difference right now. And Bob Goyke with an opportunity. The lead is 15. He's got a break. Hit the middle of the head pin. Only the 3-6-10. Much better and easier spare than his opponent had on lane 12 just a, a second ago. Work with us, this Ammonite Omega team coming back to shoot at 268 in game two of the first match to defeat Lens Limited. Yep, and we should say also this is two games total pins to decide the winner. And here's another open, unbelievable mistake by Bob Goyke at this point. I don't think he expected that ball to look at all, and here it is. Right now it's already moving left. <coughs> Now Vince Biondo will have an opportunity to increase Vice Grip's lead. Watch what he does to the top of the backswing here, Jay. Watch this kid can really get it up. See how he cups the wrist? Watch how he kind of loops it at the top. Right there, and then brings it back under. Great. Leaves the 10. <laughs> Upcoming, ABC West Lanes, Mechanicburg, Pennsylvania, and then the Regal Lanes out in Orange, California. Then we're in St. Louis, and then out in Greeley, Colorado. That uh, show from uh, Highland Park Lanes in Greeley, Colorado will not be televised, but we hope to see many of you there. Then Fountain Valley, California. Don't forget, uh, you folks, the WIBC events. Want to get your entries in? Aldo <laughs> picks up the fair. There's the last one. Shut Sunshine Lanes down in Florida. We're on to Vegas and Indianapolis. 22 stops, 28 national qualifying events in the 95-96 season. There's how you enter. Call Tom Bodecker, 414-423-3415. Well, we're down to the guys that do all the hard work now, Jay. This is strike time. Get there, another one watch short. And I tell you what, he made a great shot there. He was, he looked, he's confused. He has no idea how that could possibly happen. Looked like he might have had a little trouble right at the line with his balance. No, he was, he was I bet, tell you what, you went down there and said, did you throw a good shot? And he'd say, that's the best shot I made all day. Uh -huh. Watch this. Look at this. He's perfectly balanced. Great rotation, but the ball just quits hooking. Like it hit some, like it hit an oil slick or something. Here's his, here he is right at the foul line. You can't be in better no, position. He was than he, then he, he backed away and looked at the line. And I, he looked like, well, how can that be? Yeah, I know I be. threw it right where I wanted it to be, and it just didn't happen. Oh! Man, oh, man. You're not going to get up. That's no, good. sir. We've seen some wonderful spare shooting. And this is the other way you pick up the washout. You bang it off the wall. Boom. <laughs> Tony Cariello. He's bowling third because he throws lots of strikes, and you want him nice and relaxed in that anchor, in that middle hole in the lineup there. on John Gaines' face after that. Well, he knows if he doesn't strike here that the match is over, basically. He has to strike to give them any chance at all to win this match. He wants to get it to Chris Barnes on a strike. Well, he had a problem with his balance. He got the ball back. 
back to the pocket, but it just didn't do the job for him. And uh, looks like Vice Grips is going to get a trip to uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Jim Otterstrom, Vice President of Marketing Service for, for Brunswick, on hand today. This Brunswick World Team Challenge certainly gained a lot of popularity over the last few years around the nation and for that matter around the world, the international aspects. We saw that, of course, at Reno, last grand championship. Davy Rosen. Now this one's history, Jay. Yep. They're just finishing out to uh, get us a legal score here. say that more than anything else, above and beyond the ability of the players, two really outstanding teams here bowling for the championship, but maybe that hometown advantage, Jay, the fact that they're bowling in a bowling center that they're very comfortable in, uh, that might have had something to do with the fact that uh, they came back and won this. The old home court or home field advantage. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. No question. Even though the lanes are a little different than they normally would bowl as far as the dressing procedure. I still feel that the familiar familiarity of the bowling center will make them more comfortable. Shaking hands with the members of the Vice Grips team who have won this Brunswick World Team Challenge Championship here in Illinois. We'll be right back. The Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge is brought to you by Brunswick. Bowling is sold on Brunswick worldwide. By Lynn Shoes for the performance approach. It's American-made Lynn Shoes, the choice of top professionals and amateurs alike. By the ABC MasterCard. Get a grip on your finances with the ABC MasterCard. By Keepsake, designer and manufacturer of championship ring awards. By DBA Products, the industry leader in lane maintenance equipment. By Avis Rent-A-Car, the official car rental agency of the American Bowling Congress. And by the American Bowling Congress and Women's International Bowling Congress, providing championship service to sanctioned leagues across the United States. Make sure your league is sanctioned by the national governing bodies. Here are the final numbers. And Vice Grips are the champions here in Vernon Hills, Illinois. And here's the man that put together this team and actually thought he might be bowling, but Larry Dilworth, you're injured, but you did a great job. Well, uh, I put this team together for experience, and myself and Adam Colton, uh, longtime PBA members, and I got injured, and I got Tony Cariello, another PBA member, to take my place, so I didn't throw a ball all weekend, but in my mind, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's very sweet. Now it's, it's very sweet. I'd like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank Ho-Chunk Casinos, um, Brunswick, ABC, Prime Network. Bill Spiegner has a wonderful bowling center here. I bowl league here. It's just a wonderful term. And we talked about you maybe having the home court advantage. Here is Jim Otterstrom of Brunswick to present the plaque. Larry, on behalf of Brunswick, I'd like to congratulate you for an excellent term. Thank you very much. Just pass that along. Let me introduce Conroy Greendeer. And Conroy, it's great having you here and great having your people a part of this. Thank you very much. It's been a it's been a very pleasurable weekend. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Ho Chunk Casino and Bingo, the Ho Chunk Nation and its enterprises. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck to you. And here is our friend. Jeff Lynn's from Lynn's Shoes with a jacket. Nice bowling all weekend, and uh, so everybody knows you won here today. We've got a jacket for you, and uh, from the employees, good luck in the Grand Championship. Thank you very much. Those will come in handy at the Grand Championship, certainly. Well, that strike by Tony there at the end was very big. Tony is a very good pressure bowler, and, <laughs> and he got a little, little loose with his arm swing on that shot. It went Brooklyn. But this house cares good on the left. <laughs> good luck to you, fellas. We will see you at the Grand Championship. There they are, your champions here in Vernon Hills, Illinois. The next World Team Challenge telecast comes your way from ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Check your local listings for dates and times. For Earl Anthony, this is Jay Randolph saying so long from Hawthorne Lanes in Vernon Hills, Illinois. 
This has been an ABC Eagles Productions telecast.